kittens virtually house train themselves if they're not with their mothers to be taught this behavior. They bury their messes so they don't smell. They can be trained to do an amazing array of tricks. They still occasionally romp like kittens when they're well into their teens. Cats love to sleep with people and will take the middle of the bed if you don't assert yourself. They'll zoom from one end of the house to the other in the middle of the night and make only a fraction of the noise a dog does. It's a tragic reality that even the youngest animals are susceptible to experiencing loss and suffering. Dogs and cats that are helpless and do not have the safety of a warm and loving family and home are frequently exposed to the risk of being mistreated, becoming homeless, or falling ill. The unfortunate start of a newborn sphinx kitten's life, along with those of her siblings, were marred by disease and an uncertain destiny. After being given the kittens by a neighbor, a good Samaritan attempted to care for them, but unfortunately one of the cats was unable to survive and passed away in the good Samaritan's home. Because the mother was aware that the puppies required additional assistance, she brought Pickle and her sibling to the ASPCA Animal Hospital for emergency medical treatment. It became immediately apparent upon arrival at the hospital that both Pickle and her brother were in grave condition. Dr. Danielle Delfino, an ASPCA veterinarian, stepped in and swiftly diagnosed both with severe upper respiratory infections. These diseases may be life-threatening, especially for kittens at such a young age, and unfortunately, Pickle's brother was unable to hold on for very long. Pickle was by alone and fighting for her life, despite the fact that she had a little physique and was in a debilitated condition. Pickle was a warrior, though. Pickle experienced a number of different health problems over the course of the subsequent six months. These issues included hypoglycemia, pneumonia, and ocular ulcers, all of which required her to visit an ophthalmologist. Because of Pickle's young age and the fact that she was ill, it was decided that the best thing for her would be for her to live with a foster family so that they could receive care and reassurance at all hours of the day and night. Pickle was very fortunate in that Dr. Danielle Delfino, whom she'd already known from her first day at AAH, would turn out to be her foster mom. During their very first encounter with one another, Dr. Delfino remembers feeling an immediate pull toward the cute little kitten. As soon as I saw her, I had the distinct impression that I wanted to adopt her, she explains. There was an immediate connection, and there was no room for doubt. Danielle has always wanted a sphinx to be a part of her four-legged family, and she was confident that not only would she be able to give Pickle the medical care that she required, but that she would also be able to provide her with the warm and nurturing environment that she'd been lacking in her early years of life. Pickle had been in foster care for a total of six months before she was eligible to be adopted. As soon as she was able to, Dr. Delfino finalized the adoption and made it official. Since being adopted, Pickle has quickly settled in and made herself at home. Danielle claims that she's the head of the household and that she and her two pet siblings, a cat named Andy and a dog named Olive, have a lot of fun together. Pickle enjoys passing her days either fiddling with one of her many toys or lazily perching herself in front of a window to observe the passing of time. Dr. Delfino adds that Pickle has a lot of spirit and personality pecked into a small package. Pickle acts like he owns the place by dancing and jumping all over it. After going through such a traumatic beginning, it's really reassuring to learn that Pickle has found a forever home where she'll be cherished as both a pet and a member of the family. The same thing also happened to another family, but with a dog this time. She was compelled to think that something wasn't right when she observed her two-year-old puppy acting in an unusual way. Now it couldn't be avoided. However, it was far too late by the time she overcame her denial and accepted the truth. Su Yun was aware of her dire situation. The police will soon be at her door, she knew. Su Yun believed she understood what she was getting into. She'd done her homework, read the reviews, and became knowledgeable about rare dog breeds. She'd bought the dog bed, collar, lead, shampoo, and personalized tag, among other things. They were prepared, in her opinion, for the commitment. She started to worry, though, when he grew out of his bed, collar, and lead. Then the unthinkable occurred. It all started so innocently. Su Yun, her husband, and their two small children resided in Kunming City, China. The industrious mother thought that it was past due for a vacation as she was feeling the strain of balancing family life and a full-time job. Su Yun was unaware that fate had a surprise in store for her. The Yuns left on their long-awaited trip to Asia with their suitcases packed and ready to go. This trip would forever alter their life. They had no idea that the error would be in the news two years from now. The family was just beginning to settle into holiday mode a few days after their arrival when they came across a litter of puppies. The kids began pleading with their parents as soon as they saw the cute balls of fluff. 
even though Su Yun and her husband had thought about getting a family dog during the previous few weeks, they never imagined that they'd discover it here. Su hugged one to her chest and pondered whether it was fate. <laughs> Su, however, was unaware of all the requirements involved in bringing one of these puppies home. The Tibetan Mastiff puppy that the Yun family purchased came with a warning that when fully grown, the animal would be expected to stand two feet tall. The Yuns were overjoyed to welcome their new family member and gave him the amusing name Little Black. They had no notion that this specific pup would turn out to be quite a problem. It wasn't long before it was time to take their new family member back to Kunming City as the family felt their bond with the new puppy deepening every day. It was also time to decide where he would spend the night. Even though Kunming City's warm temperature permitted canines to sleep outside, the Yuns decided Little Black would be an indoor dog. Little Black was delighted to remain with his new family. However, it didn't take long for the family to start noticing something strange about Little Black. Su Yun found it a little odd that he wouldn't eat any of the dog food she put in front of him. He would only enthusiastically consume fruits and noodles, and Su complied. But because she was a novice dog owner, she didn't give it much thought and assumed he was just picky. However, Little Black soon started devouring her whole. Little Black would eat two buckets of noodles and the entire box of mixed fruits every day, and there was no hint of his appetite decreasing. Little Black's meals had cost Su Yun a fortune by the time he was a year old. Along with his peculiar love for fruits and noodles, the family started to notice some other unsettling traits in their new dog. They had no idea that there would later be legal issues. Su Yun had anticipated that Little Black would mature into a sizable dog, but she'd not anticipated his current size. Little Black was considerably bigger than even the seller had anticipated at the age of two. He was now three feet tall and weighed an incredible 250 pounds. Su Yun, however, once witnessed Little Black engaging in a frightening act in the kitchen, which immediately sent off the alarm bells. When Su Yun entered, Little Black was on his hind legs. Su had seen other dogs perform stunts or beg for food while standing up like a human, but this was unique. It was finally time to accept the fact that this dog was really odd in several ways. Then she started to feel scared. The young puppy was growing so quickly that the family began to feel threatened by their dog. Some characteristics, like the size of his teeth, were not discernible when he was a puppy. Little Black hated walking on all fours, therefore he was now always standing up straight. It was starting to feel a little frightening being around him because of his size and his gigantic white teeth. Su Yun was, however, still holding on to her denial. Su Yun was attempting to suppress her anxieties, but Little Black was beginning to gain a reputation among the neighborhood. The large dog's daily walks had turned into a show, and before long, he was too big to live inside the house. He had a temporary dog home constructed in the yard by the family. Of course, merely transferring him outside didn't solve their issues. Su Yun anticipated that Little Black would begin acting like an outside dog now that he was one. You'd assume he'd have started barking at anything that moved and protecting the house from invaders. He never did, though. Su Yun realized that the only sound she had ever heard from him was a deep growl. She'd made a serious error, and this was becoming abundantly evident. Additionally, Su Yun's anxieties rose as Little Black got bigger. Just something didn't seem right. She started looking into typical Tibetan Mastiff behavior, but what she discovered just made her anxieties worse. After she shared a picture of Little Black online, a vet on a site advised her that the police would need to be called. In reality, Little Black was a huge black bear. He was also not your typical black bear, the veterinarian informed her. He was a black bear from Asia, commonly referred to as a Tibetan or Himalayan bear. These bears can grow to be six feet tall and weigh a massive 440 pounds. After that, he revealed something to her that broke her heart. Any sort of bear is illegal to own in China, and doing so is a crime that carries a jail sentence. Su Yun was in a really difficult circumstance. She'd come to adore Little Black, but she was aware that she couldn't keep him. What if he started acting violently against her or the kids? The danger simply wasn't worth it. She desperately believed that she could act before the authorities got involved. She made a call to a neighborhood zoo as her first move. She didn't have Little Black's birth certificate, and the zoo wouldn't even think about allowing him in without it. Additionally, they had no method of getting in touch with the individual who had sold the bear and had purchased it on vacation. Su Yun had no other options. She was forced to make the police call herself because she was between a proverbial rock and a hard place. She had no idea that they were already pursuing her. Within an hour, the police and wildlife specialists were at her house. The veterinarian who had seen her post in a forum from animal behaviorists had forewarned them. 
Su Yun had some justification to make. She complied with the authorities, trying to provide them with all the information they required to locate Little Black a secure new home and explain the situation she'd found herself in. What would the repercussions be, though? Little Black appeared more bear-like as he matured, according to Su Yun. She then acknowledged being a little afraid of bears. Wildlife authorities went to Little Black to check on him while the cops stayed with Su Yun to gather information. While Su Yun awaited the decision, they examined him for any wounds or indications of malnutrition. Little Black was deemed to be healthy and well-fed by authorities. To bring him to the neighborhood wildlife center, they now needed to tranquilize him. Experts were shocked when he showed up, since Su Yun had been housing a deadly Asiatic bear in her backyard. Su Yun's major error was quickly reported by the media.